This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the 2018 iPad, the sixth generation model, and it's a lot like the 2017 model, no surprise there, but there's two big changes here. First is the CPU. It moves up to the Apple A10 CPU, which is about 33% faster than the previous 2017 model. For those of you who play games and who want to use this safe for something like Procreate, particularly with bigger canvases, that does make a difference. Also, it works with the Apple Pencil. This is just a, a slick wrap skin that I happen to have on this. This is an app, normal Apple pencil here so you don't have to go into the pro models that's kind of nice I know a lot of people wanted something that they could sketch on with a really good pencil or drawing experience but the pros were just too expensive and a lot of Windows convertible laptops with pens are expensive too so now for $329 or $299 if you're a kid or you can get any kind of educational discount you can get into the drawing experience the only drawback is the pencil is still $99 educational discount on this one is $10 so it's $89 now Logitech is going to have the crayon they call it which is a more kid friendly form factor it's a squat little pencil and it's going to be 50 bucks so that's nice but that logitech one doesn't support pressure sensitivity so for those of you who are using it for art that's probably not going to be an option i'm also not sure if it's going to be widely available or if they're just going to sell that directly to schools anyway we're going to look at it now so the base iPad for 2018 starts at $329, like I said, $30 cheaper if you're getting an educational discount on it. That's 32 gigs of storage, and that's the Wi-Fi only model. It's available in silver, space, gray, and gold. Nothing new or surprising there. Still weighs around a pound, and it's pretty slim, though not as slim as the Pro models. Not a surprise. Now you can go up to 128 gigs of storage. That's the highest capacity. There's only two capacities available. That raises the price by $100. So then you're looking at $429. If you want to get it, with Wi-Fi plus LTE, then you're looking at the usual around $130 upcharger. So it's $329 base, and then you go up to $459. So that's a little bit of an expensive option, but that one is still available as well. Again, if you want something like higher than the base retina display resolution, you're looking at the Pro model. So this is 2048 by 1536 resolution, which is a perfectly respectable resolution. It matches the Samsung Galaxy Tab S3, for example, which also supports a pen but does cost more money. You're going to get that Apple A10 CPU, which is the same thing you would have in the iPhone 7. So the previous 2017 model had the Apple A9 CPU. We're moving up to the A10. The Pros have the A10X, which is a bit faster and the latest generation iPhone 10 and 8 and 8 plus use the a11 got all that what that means and you can see the, the benchmark comparison here for Geekbench 4 on screen is that it's faster actually than the iPhone 7 despite having pretty much the same CPU there but not as fast as say the iPhone 10 or the pro models given the pricing and where that fits that's fine given the performance levels here it's fast enough to handle doing procreate with large canvases it's fine for playing games you can see PUBG mobile on screen they're playing awesome and sweet so a, a lot of people use an iPad for a multimedia device and for a game playing device and that's a nice CPU jump from last year's model I don't think a lot of people with the 2017 model are going to jump on this upgrade unless you want the pencil then there's certainly a compelling difference there if you really coveted the pros uh, but you couldn't afford them uh, this might be an option especially if you can do some kind of trade-in or sell your old one Craigslist or whatever it is that sort of thing Typical with iPads, what the cameras you're getting here are there a couple of generations ago from whatever the top iPhone was. You have an 8 megapixel rear camera. It shoots 1080p video. It has an f2.4 lens, and it can do 120 frame per second slow motion as well. You've got a 720p front 1.2 megapixel FaceTime HD camera on, on your front camera. So they're decent enough cameras. They're not show-stopping good cameras, but then again, how many of you do use your tablets for your main photo device anyway? So obviously the big selling point of this model over the previous models is the fact that it works with the Apple Pencil, like I said. So it's a perfectly wonderful note-taking experience. The Apple Pencil is one of my favorite solutions, and it's great that it's more affordable now, other than the fact the pencil itself is expensive. So if you need a note-taking device, this is fine. In fact, this is better than fine, and... The only sort of drawback here is that this is not a laminated or bonded glass display, so there's an air gap. That means that it's sort of like the glass looks like it's a little bit above the actual display. So there's a slight disconnect. When you're taking notes, honest to goodness, it really doesn't matter that much. When you're doing art, it's only ever so slightly distracting. It makes for a less pretty display, but then again, this is not the more expensive model. I don't find it that bad. Sure, you don't have the Pro Motion display, which is Apple's fancy word for the 120 hertz refresh rate, so the pencil 
looks like it's even more immediate with less lag when you're writing on it. But you know what? The first generation iPad Pro has had 60 hertz refresh displays like this too. And people were not complaining. Everybody thought it was pretty fast and pretty fluid. So for note taking, this is fantastic. And I can rest my hand on the screen. Palm rejection on the iPad and iPad Pro are actually better than on Entrig and Wacom AES digitizers, which are the ones that are used in most Windows convertibles and tablets. Now, one thing to note, though, is that because this isn't laminated glass, there is an air gap in there, so that means more noise. You can hear it even when you tap on the screen, but that's not so much because your finger is a nice cushy thing. When you do the pencil on the screen, you can just listen to this. Oh, gosh, right? That's pretty loud. Now, imagine this in a classroom with 30 kids going clack, 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 and it's going to be like... It's going to be noisy in that classroom. So, well, th there is the drawback of having this, this lower end display on the device. Now, this is Procreate 4, and this is a screen resolution size canvas here. And it's a really enjoyable and still very fluid experience here. I, Procreate is just a fantastic application if you want to do drawing. So here I'm using a 6B pencil, and I'm going to put in some shading on my mountains to be here. So I'm using the tip of the pencil now to make my dark lines. And if I turn it sideways, there's my shadows right there. So you see, you've got the same tilt capabilities that you would with an iPad Pro, which is pretty darn nice, the same levels of pressure sensitivity. It's a fantastic thing. And in terms of multitasking in iOS 11, you want to say I want to have a picture of some mountains to help me along looking at it. So we've got the multitasking thing going on here, and it works very well. It's, I mean, you've got an A10 CPU in here. The speed is good. It's, it's really, it's quite nice, honestly. What they've done with iOS 11 for the iPads in particular in terms of multitasking is just really sweet. So there we've got all of my programs. I can switch between them. Uh -huh, I've been playing PUBG Mobile. You can see that. It's all good stuff. So yeah, you can say this isn't, wow, the most exciting iPad release ever. Look at it. It still looks like the same old iPad from last year, all that sort of thing. But I would say the pencil and the speed improvements are pretty reasonable. For $329, bucks, you are getting a lot of nice tablet here with the whole iOS ecosystem and experience and all the accessories that are available. So I'm pretty positive about it. I can't really say that I've got complaints about it because if you want higher end stuff, there is the more expensive iPad Pro model. I think it's very, pretty fair what you're getting for the money here. Battery life so far seems to be about the same as the last generation, and it meets Apple's claims. So what do they say on their website actually is the truth, which is pretty nice and refreshing compared to a lot of other manufacturers. As a laptop replacement, you know, this has been done and talked about again and again, and I leave it up to you as to whether you think this is a viable laptop replacement. I personally find it a little bit small. I still need my desktop programs, but other people don't. I mean, you've got Safari here. You've got your full web browser, you've got an email client, you've got mobile versions of Photoshop, which are much pared down, but still pretty decent. Uh, obviously, all the Apple suite, the iWork suite, they're adding pencil-friendly features to this all the time as well. So if you want to do annotations or markup on your keynote presentations or in your pages, you can do that as well. You've got GarageBand, you can make your music. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this. You've even got iMovie to edit your movie footage. And with the A10 CPU, it's perfectly capable, especially with the 1080p video that this itself shoots. So that's the 2018 iPad. Again, it's the sixth generation for those of you who are counting. And it's, you know, for 329, it's a really nice iPad, duh, right? Just like the 2017 was, but this is even better because it's faster. And since a lot of you out there, I think, use these to play games, fast does make a difference. Also because Apple has done a very good job with multitasking in iOS 11, making it easy to juggle applications back and forth. It's nice if you can actually take advantage of that without it slowing down. The two gigs of RAM, like I said, it would be nice to have more, wouldn't it? I mean, it's not a showstopper, but I know a lot of people like that, but that's what the pro models are for, obviously. If you want the better display, if you want higher performance still, if you want more RAM, all that stuff, there are the iPad Pro models. Uh, the, the most exciting thing about it, and the whole reason why Apple touted this as an education product, they could have touted it as an art product too, or a note-taking product, but whatever, is the pencil. So you've got an awesome note-taking device, an awesome art device, and something that's fun for education too, as long as you can stand in a classroom with people going, you know, all day long. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.